Hi YouTube. So today, I know what you're thinking, more power banks, and uh, yes, we're going to do another RAV power power bank. Now I've uh, reviewed a few of these, RAV power and the Anchor, and they're brilliant little devices for keeping your phone charged, any other small USB things you may have. But this, this video is going to be a newish, it's not brand new, I waited until this came on a deal, so this was on Amazon, Amazon deals for less than 50 quid, and uh, it is a RAV power power bank with a 230 volt outlet. Now, I think these they do do these for other countries, so obviously this is a UK three pin plug, uh, the best plugs in the world. And um, they do 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 this for other countries, and I'm sure they do a, a 110 volt version for the US and uh, other places like that. And uh, yeah, it's a neat little bank. Now, what we'll do is we'll just start with the power capacity. So, let me zoom in for you. That as you can see, that's the uh, that's the spec on it, and it's uh, 20,000 effectively milliamp hours. Or 74 watt hours, and that compares, say, that one there's the 13 and a half. You see, it's similar width wise, but it's square, you could probably fit three of those in. So, you do you do lose um, capacity for a size because obviously it's, it's got an inverter built into it, and uh. Got power gauge just like most of them. LED bars come up. This one, the large RAV power one I've got, is a 20,000 again, 74. So it's the equivalent of that. Um, that's a that's a really good power bank. But the anchor, I think you'll see it in my other video, but almost exactly the same size, does take it up to 26. So when it comes to the amount of power you can have, you're going to want to stick with a traditional one, but you're limited to any power in USB devices, which is a pain. So this thing will run AC, but I don't necessarily recommend it. Um, I think it's a great idea. It's the way they should probably go. But this one, they just didn't. They just didn't build it very well, in my opinion. They did. They didn't uh, design it very well. So the first thing with any power bank is you can charge them from USB. So you got anywhere, anywhere in the world, you're going to be able to pick up a USB connection cable, stick it in there, and charge the thing. And every USB power bank of and every every lithium ion little power bank like this with USB output I've seen so far or bought has had USB in. This crap doesn't. So what we have there is the input. Uh, it does have Type C which they could have used, but they didn't. They chose not to. And there's no reason I can't think. I can't think why they wouldn't use that because it's not because there's an AC output because it doesn't really make any difference. They can still they can still use a low voltage input, five volts or the Type C up to twenty volts, whatever it goes to, to charge this thing. It, j it just might mean slightly more complexity uh, and additional additional circuits. But really, they should be able to engineer around it. So that is a big, big, huge downer for this thing and you might not you might not think of a reason why well my initial thought I didn't I didn't know that this came with that until I received it and took it out and um, my initial thought was fine it's 20,000 milliamp hour that's okay but it's not great uh, especially when you're going to be powering an AC device so you're going to get through it and uh, I thought that's fine what I'll do with that one there Take a USB cable, 
bung that one into there and charge it. And when that one runs out, bung that one in. That way I only need one inverter and then the space. I can I can have, you know, 70, 80 thousand milliamp hour in almost the same space stood beside it ready to run it now whether the inverter will take that whether the you know, obviously this will generate heat as it's generating its AC output and uh, if it's let up to the up close to the limit it may overheat it may not be spec for continuous running I don't know how long this will run um, so that could be a problem, but I just need to make it bigger, um, more fans, more heat sinking, whatever. It could do it. Constant running inverters are very common, uh, and small dual conversion UPSs are, are fairly common nowadays. Obviously, not this small, but um, you know they're very common. The techs out there, it can be done. At what price? I don't know. So this that was the first fail with this thing. The second fail is probably the power capacity. It's fine if you've got something that will power it but um, if we look there back on the spec so type C is 5 volt 3 amps that's a bit down on some type C outputs um, and the AC output 220 volt 50 hertz perfect for the UK 70 watt max 60 watt rated now there is another video of a guy reviewing this it will probably link up in the suggested videos if not uh, a search for this will show it up and there's a guy that plugs a hair dryer in I think and overloads it it trips it it has a, obviously has a thermal reset so it waits however long couple of minutes and then turns back on so that's quite good so anyway there we go and that, that 60 watt limit is a problem so what I was going to do to demonstrate to you is charge a battery and not the most efficient way of doing it but it's just an easy thing I've got here in the workshop and uh, I was going to plug my DeWalt drill battery in and charge it. I'm not even going to try it because it will just trip it out. Uh, actually, it might not. I'll try the other one first to show you <laughs> it working. Um, but you see, this thing's 230 volts at 0.75 amps, so you know you're pushing 200 watts, and that's that's three times what this this thing is capable of uh, more than three times it's continuous so charging an 18 volt drill battery is not going to happen uh, my, my intended use probably now for this is in a in a short duration power cut obviously phone lines in I don't know how it works around the world but phone lines in the UK have a 50 volt uh, line on them so phone lines stay up generally and they work and all the BT exchanges have a 50 volt uh, battery backup system so the phones generally keep working in the power cut and if it's only local your internet's probably still going to be up whereas the, your house might be out electric so obviously your router stops and you can't use your iPad then your phone for, for the internet so what I would do is plug this in to my router and run that my router is 12 volt this is not the most efficient way of doing it but it's so easy uh, I have taken the battery up we, we get power cuts here I'm out in the country in the UK and um, we get power cuts here and I've taken a a car battery up the house and with just a barrel DC barrel connector connected it on powered up the uh, router and we've had internet can watch Netflix lovely um, anyway I can't take the router up because the missus will kill me so I did find this which will run off of it this is a, a Bosch 10 volt charger so potentially if you've got that this application it could do it so this thing is 230 volts 26 watts and an output of 10.8 one and a half amps maximum so we should be well within capability of this you plug two of them in the Bosch do do a bigger charger um, which I have somewhere I haven't checked that but it certainly will piss this one no problem so you got to plug it in now with the UK plug obviously our plugs are quite big especially compared to many countries we do get an issue with the bigger plugs you can only just reach out 
No, if I plug in, uh, if I plug in my adapter for my meter, which I haven't got here, I know for a fact that I won't be able to push that button. But anyway, just something to note. Also obscures the input, and it makes those very tight as well. You probably can still get in. But you got to hold it down. You get whining, and the battery's charging. Fine, she works. Let's have a look what's going on though. Let's, um, let's have a look at the waveform coming out of this thing because it's not the prettiest. Now, obviously, you know, you, you're not going to expect a uh, perfect sine wave. It is a modified, uh, modified sine wave output, and. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Don't I personally wouldn't want to use it on expensive sensitive equipment. I think it, it does say don't use it on like medical equipment and things like that in the brochure. That's mainly to cover their ass I would imagine. Uh so pull that up. It does stay live, so the power switch may not be a problem if you if you're happy to do that. Uh the problem we have in the UK is our plugs are our plugs are very well designed, so you can't electrocute yourself very easily pulling them in and out with the, with the supply life. And uh, some some countries, I think, probably are a bit more risky of electrocuting yourself. And also, the cheap Chinese knockoff plugs that they supply to the UK. Um, I've got one now, but it's powering the light, so I can't take it out. It's a really uh, the Chinese supply plugs that are really cut down like that. And, uh, it's not good, you, you've got a chance of electrocuting yourself. In fact, this is the one <laughs> This is the one supplied with RAV power. This is the adapter, it came in the box. Let me just show you that now. So this is the box that this power, this power bank comes in. Uh, quite a nice little case, it's just and just fits. I mean it is tight, you can't fit much else in there. There's some plastic stuff around it. You get a couple cables. Um, you know that's that's basically what it was. The adapter came in it. I'm not sure why the adapter came in it. To be fair, because the supply for it is up here, and that's got a decent plug on it actually. It's a reasonable plug anyway. And the power the power bank that supplies it is that little brick. So again, a pain in the ass compared to a normal power bank. And that will that will go in there. See, this thing's turned off. I guess that's because of no load. Um, that'll go in there, and you can you could use EU stuff in there then. Be all right. So anyway, yes, we're going to look. Let me plug my tester in. Okay, obviously we've got no earth reference anyway. Can you see the meter? I think it's a bit crappy to show on camera. There we go, you can make that out, I think. Right, let's turn her on. And there we go, there's no noise this time, there's obviously no load on it. So it's, like, it's actually, by the camera, there's no noise at all. But you can see on here, it says 220, but we got a 230 volt reading on on this meter. This is this is calibrated this meter. So I'm... right now, what you can see, we're actually getting quite a good frequency. We're getting 50.4. That's acceptable. The voltage, the voltage is perfect actually. It says 220, but it's 230. In the UK, we get we get 240. Uh, to bring us in line with the EU, it was dropped to 230. Basically, we did nothing except. Um, up the up the tolerance, so we, we, the the voltage was allowed to go up to 240, and the spec is 230. So often in the UK, we'll we'll see we'll see 240, -ish, but 230 is bang on. It's what we're supposed to get, and um, as work's done, 230 is becoming more common. It's actually actually lower. People were using voltage optimization, um, but what we can see. Let's hold it so it doesn't move around. See that on hold. 
and there we go that's uh, that's your sine wave that you're getting out of it okay so now a lot of equipment a lot of low power equipment like what we're using we're gonna get um, we're gonna get a rectifier anyway so this this is gonna this is gonna be changing DC via an inverter into the AC uh, the chopper is is obviously chopper and the smooth smoothing is obviously very rough and we get that sort of double square wave rather than a sine wave that you see but it's going to come into this bit of equi equipment anyway something like this something like my router I was on about and almost certainly it's going to go into a rectifier be rectified back to DC and um, shouldn't really have too much of an ill effect so that's usable uh, so there we go really I, I wish I could uh, give my opinion of power like all of this stuff I, I buy it when it comes on offer I don't get supplied any of this kit for review so you get my honest opinion as you can probably tell by this I think it's a it's a great idea it's where they need to go but they've just implemented it wrong I, I need a USB in ideally I want USB in whilst this thing's running and um, really uh, I, know, I know it's going to be hard and you, you're going to end up with a bulky thing but even so I could probably manage something twice the size three times the size of this easy if I could get a few hundred watts out rather than the, the 60 watt rated um, and I'd like to see a nicer waveform but it's not too bad it's not too bad it'll work so there we go this is the RAV power power station series and uh, hopefully that gives you something to think about and keep an eye out for hopefully improved versions thanks for watching bye